if you haven't heard about the company called SM Light from Ukraine, then you probably haven't digged around for a new coordinator in some time. And they have a bunch of them, up to the ones that support USB, Ethernet, PoE power, but also Wi-Fi. But no, today we are not going to talk about coordinators. We will talk about them next week. Instead, today we are going to talk about A1 SLWF03. And that's a WLED or LED controller. We'll start in a couple of seconds. First note, this A1 SLWF03 controller was sent to me free of charge by SM Light team, and I thank them for that. But besides this LED controller, they've also sent me a bunch of Zigbee coordinators. Next week we will be looking at them. They haven't seen the video before it was released, they didn't send me what I should record, and whatever I show you in this video is case of my digging around and playing with it for some time. So what is A1 SLWF03? It's a WLED, sound reactive LED controller, but it's also much more than that. Let's look at the specification here. The device is based on SOC ESP32, it has digital I2S microphone, don't confuse it with the I2C, they are similar but they are not the same. It also has built-in infrared receiver, sensor button, UART or USB programmer, so you don't have to use any other external devices to program it. It supports 5, 12 and 24 watt strips and out of box it supports two channels for the LED strips, which can be expanded with six more through the pins that are available on the board itself. LED wires are very easy to connect via the screw terminals. And yes, you also get the small screwdriver, so you have everything ready out of box to start playing with this device. In terms of powering, you can use Type-C, DC plug, that's 5.5 by 2.5 mm if I'm not mistaken, and also you have screw terminal for powering the device. I've already mentioned that there are some pins exposed. I think overall you have 10 pins that are available on the board. And yes, it can also work as a voice microphone for home assistant assist, but the device can also be used as a home assistant Bluetooth proxy via the ESP Home. If you plan to use this as assist or Bluetooth proxy device, remember, you will lose the capability to control the LEDs, at least with WLED. So it's either WLED as a firmware or ESP Home as a firmware. In my opinion, you should definitely stick to using this one as a WLED controller. But if you want small, compact Home Assistant ESP Home device, then this one should also do. I've already mentioned that the device is very small. It's around 59 mm by 30 mm by 23 mm. So very tiny, tiny compact device. If you're looking for a very economical and small WLED controller, then this device is definitely for you. It allows you to just plug in the LED strips, plug in the power supply and everything will be ready for your WLED journey. Also, the microphone and ER will be enabled out of box with the firmware that is provided on the board itself. The firmware I received the device with was 13. something, but the firmware upgrade is also easy. We'll look at that in a couple of seconds. With that sound reactive capability, my daughter decided that this should be the controller that I'm using for the WLED strips in her room, both 2D metrics and also the simple one around her bed. So I will be getting some more of them. This device will be replacing my current WLED controller on my recording setup. And so far I have been using Dig Uno or Dig Uno boards by Quindor, the DIY version that I made myself. Although the boards worked perfectly up until the 13. whatever firmware, with the latest firmware I'm having so much issues that I'm looking forward to replace those boards with this one here. As I've said, you can also use this device as a recorder or a microphone for home assistant assist. Remember that this specific device, unfortunately with the sock it is using, is not currently supporting micro wake up words. So everything has to be done on the home assistant server itself. That may be one of the reasons why you may not use this device as an assist microphone. But if you are okay with Home Assistant processing everything, yes, you can also use it, as I mentioned, for the Assist. And since Assist is also ESP Home based, 
yes, you can also do other projects with this board too. Remember that it already has touch button on the device itself, it has infrared receiver, so you can send infrared commands via the remote, and the remote can also be bought at the time of the purchase of the device, depending on what seller you are using to buy this device from. Since this device is, as we said a couple of times, ESP home base, you can also use it as a Bluetooth proxy. I don't think that this is a good idea because you are losing a ton of functionality with that, so I really would recommend that you stick up with the WLED controller on it, and for Bluetooth proxy go for something small as M5 stack light or something similar. That is cheap, compact and does the work well. We've already gone through all built-in functionality or features and we did mention all of the powering options. After you unbox the device, first thing you would probably do is connect the LED strip. Please remember, while you are connecting the LED strip, the device needs to be powered off, or there must be no power supply attached to the device itself. After you attach the strip, you just plug in the USB-C cable, and it should start in the access point mode. That means that the device will be booted, the sound reactive module will be already active, you can play with that device, but it will not be attached to your network. So connect to it via the access point, configure the Wi-Fi credential, add the static IP address if you want, and I do that for all of my WLED boards. And when you click save, it should connect to your Wi-Fi network and then you have access over the Wi-Fi network by either the static IP address or the address that was provided by DHCP server. In my case, I'm using the fixed IP address and this is how the typical WLED screen looks. I will not be going through all of the details and things that you can do with the WLED software, but we will look at the differences and also some presets on this firmware. For example, we already have two presets. One default one is a simple preset of the WLED strip, static one. It's not static in terms of LEDs are not doing something, it's just static in terms of it's not reacting to the sound. And next one is sound reactive, where, as you can see, while I'm talking, and it's really far, far away from me, it's reacting and it is changing the WLED color. If you have never seen WLED software before, and no, WLED software doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have Home Assistant, but it nicely ties in with Home Assistant. You can control it via the mobile app, that is WLED mobile app, you can control it via the web interface, and this is a typical web interface. I've just enabled PC mode. PC mode makes it easier to control the WLED over the web interface. Peak allows you to peek in at the current state of the LED strip. When it is disabled, I don't know what the WLED strip is doing or LED strip is doing. If I enable it, you can see the preview of how the effects look on the device itself or on the LED strip. Let's go to configuration. In the light preference, you configure your LED strips. You select type of the strip, is it strip, 2D matrix or 3D matrix or cube. Then you enable automatic brightness limiter. It limits the brightness of the LEDs so they don't go above certain threshold. In this case, 3 amps. Select the LED voltage, I will be leaving it default. For the LED output, you can select various types of LED strips, length of the board and the GPIO pin where the LEDs are connected, plus some other configuration options. You can also click plus to add additional segments. As I've said, out of box, it supports two LED segments. Then you can configure other options such as buttons. This one has button at the GPIO 26. Infrared is configured at the GPIO 4. And you can enable or disable turn LEDs on after power up reset. I prefer to have this off because, yeah, if the power fails and I'm not at home, I want LEDs to be off. You can select the default preset, in this case this is sound reactive, plus some other features as transitions, timed light, etc. I've never previously played with sound settings because none of my current WLED controls has any microphone. So this was the first for me. These settings for squelch, 10 and gain 30 are the ones that this device comes pre-configured with. You may play with the settings depending on your setup and the location of the controller and depending on how much do you want this to react on sound. Should it be very sensitive or not so sensitive? Here you select type of the microphone and pins. These are again default values and if you ever factor the set device or flash it with a WLED firmware that doesn't have presets for this device, these are the settings you should input. I haven't used updates page in a long, long, long time because Home Assistant has a great integration with WLED and now you can update the WLEDs directly from Home Assistant. Previously, I always used to do it through the UI, but also with the latest 
14.1 updates to WLED, my DIG or DIG UNO boards have a lot of issues, so I did take a step back and flash them with the older versions of firmware by using the OTA. But again, this is not something specific to this device, this is just the standard WLED security and update page. One thing I would recommend is to do backup of this configuration, download it and put it somewhere safe, so that if by accident you flash a new firmware and forget the settings specific for this board, you can load or restore your presets and configuration from this backup file. As you can see, this one is running WLED SR Sound Reactive version 0.13.3, and we will be updating to the newer version. SM Lite has also very nice documentation for each of the devices. There may be some typos and not all sections are finished, but it should be sufficient for whatever you want to do. There is an introduction page where we see key features for this device, it tells you how to power the device, how to connect the WLED strips. For the flash and update, once again, we have nice documentation that allows you how to flash by using the SM Lite web flasher, and that's a recommended way to update, or to use WLED web flasher, or you can use also the OTA update that I just showed you a couple of seconds ago. I will be going for the SM Lite web flasher. I will be now flashing the latest official firmware from SM Lite for WLED. Currently, I have 0.13.3 and I will be flashing 0.14.0. There is already 0.14.1, I think, but as I said, I'm having issues with it. So even if that one would be available here, I'm not sure that I will be going with that one here. If you want to flash the device via the web flasher from SM Lite, you need to connect it to your PC via the USB-A to USB-C cable. It will not work with USB-C to USB-C or Type-C to Type-C cable. Click on Flash SRW LED, select the device from the list. In my case, this is this COM8. Click Connect, and I will be installing this Sound Reactive W LED 040. Install. And it has finished. Click Next, and this should be it. The device has now been flashed with the latest firmware. And as you can see while I'm talking, it is yeah, detecting my sound, and depending on that, I have a special effect. Depending on the effect that you select, you can see the difference in the LED strip, but also here in the peak, how it will look in your setup. Of course, it also reacts not just to voice, but also to music. So select the best strip for your location, select the presetting for the effect, and you are good to go. If everything is configured well, the LED strip should be now detected by Home Assistant. You should receive notification that the new device has been discovered. Click on the name of the device on Configure, Submit, select area for it and click finish. And now we have one device with 24 entities. Click on it and you see that you can control it by clicking it on and off. You can select presets, color palette, check if you have the latest firmware or not, intensity of the light. You can turn the night light that allows you to turn automatically light after, for example, 30 minutes, restart the board, reverse the effect, speed. You can receive sync requests or you can send the sync requests and some diagnostics such as estimated current used, IP address of the device, LED count and the max current that is enabled for this device. You can now add it to your automations, to your scenes. This device is going to replace my current device that is controlling not the lights themselves, but I have single LED strip behind my desk that is currently powered by Quindor's Diguno or Diguno board that I've assembled myself. I will be pulling that one out and instead using this A1 SLWF03 board. And also I will be having awesome effects on my desk whenever I talk, play games, edit videos, etc. based on the sound volume it detects. Is it worth buying this device? In my opinion, it's always nicer to have community project or DIY project than some commercial whatever that depends on their software that is not open source and that you cannot tinker with. I know that some, for example, Govi has a lot of LED strips or a lot of LED style LEDs that you can use, but I would still prefer a device like this over, for example, Philips Commercial One. Currently, the device is selling for around $16 and is getting shipped directly from China. As this company is operating in Ukraine, unfortunately, due to war that is currently going on, they are unable to produce devices anymore there. Previously, all of the devices they've been producing were produced on site in Ukraine, but yeah, they are now producing them in China and they are getting shipped directly from China. There are also some local companies that are selling them, for example, in US or Europe, so you can buy it directly from those companies. But you can also find them on AliExpress. I will be leaving a link to this site so you can find the store that is closest to you. 
if you are looking for WLED controller, I definitely recommend that you check this one out. The price is okay, so you can start with one, test it, see if it fits your scenario. If it doesn't, you can convert it to the Home Assistant Assist microphone, remote mic, but also to Bluetooth proxy for Home Assistant. But believe me, you will not be converting them. No, you will be using them as a WLED controller. If anyone from you wants to play with the Home Assistant Assist configuration, I will be leaving a link to GitHub repository where you can find the code for the ESP Home that can be used then to compile the firmware for the Home Assistant Assist. Once again, I want to thank SM Lite for sending me this device. I really do like it and I will definitely be buying more of them to stock up and replace my current WLED controllers. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And while you are already there, check that you are subscribed. If not, click on the subscribe button so you don't miss on the future video updates. And as I've said, next week on the 4th of April, there should be video on SM Lite controllers. We will be looking at a bunch of them. And before I end up the video, I want also to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, shared or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking on the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always do super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. And by the way, if you are located in Croatia or Zagreb, we will be having a next meetup. I'm still not 100% sure of the date, but currently 20th of April looks as the most promising candidate. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.